Hey, it's me, Steve WB. Welcome back to my channel. And today we are back in the garage for another exciting project. And as you know, from my previous videos, I bought the electric unicycle, the Super Ride S1000, and I did a range test on it and it had a range of around seven miles. It's advertised as 15 miles, but I'm over 200 pounds. So I'm as assuming and fairly sure that that has something to do with the range change. So what I'm gonna do is, Today, we are going to build a booster battery, a DIY secondary battery pack that will tie in to the existing battery of the Super Ride S1000. And we're going to attempt to double the range. So let's get started. And here it is, the little Super Ride S1000. It's on charge right now. This is the box right here that we're gonna be pulling out. Basically, you just unplug the cables from it, and then there's a single screw in there that you take out and the whole thing just slides out. It's made to be removable. And then somewhere in this front area here, I'm gonna drill a hole and make another access point for another wire to go in. And I'm gonna make a, another 60 volt battery out of some drone batteries that, I've, that I have that I no longer use. And I'm probably gonna attach them on the front or the back of this bar and just be able to plug them in there and see how much range I can get. If it does triple the range, when I did the first range test, it took me an hour to go seven and a half miles. So I can just imagine how long it'd take me to go you know, 14 miles, 21 miles, whatever it may be, should be interesting. So without any further delay, let's go ahead and get right into it. Okay, so here it is, the battery slash brains control board of the Super Ride S1000. And what we have to do is crack this case open by removing these four screws, see how the battery is laid out and where we can actually tie into the battery line. So without any further delay, let's get started. Okay, so we got all the screws out and here we go. The moment of truth. And bam, there you have it. All the controls connected by a single tiny little battery connector. Oh, two power connectors. This is apparently for the charger, for the charging the battery pack. There you go. So let's go ahead and just take this and we'll set it over to the side. And then here, of course, you should have your battery. And it's just one chunk of a battery. It seems like it's stuck in there pretty well. As you can tell, it's quite the sizable battery, but it is a, a 60 volt. Okay, so here's the quick scope of the project. As you can see, I have six batteries here. Each of these batteries are 22 volt batteries, which whenever I connect them in series is going to give me 66 volts. I'm going to form two separate packs that can both be plugged in together and also plugged in to the main battery as range extenders. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I don't want to do very much modification to this box at all. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this little pigtail here. And as you can see, it's got a battery connector on the end. And I'm just going to basically drill a hole, run this out, and splice into these two wires. So this will still go into the main board. And then if I need to hook up more batteries, it'll complement this battery all feeding to the main board. So step one, let's get this connected and this stuck out of here and sealed up and this put back together and back on the bike so it's ready to ride. And then all I have to do is build the battery pack so that I can add at any time. A little bit of advice too, when you're working on wires to a battery pack, you never want to cut across both wires at the same time. Make sure you work on them individually. It's probably pretty obvious why, but if you like fireworks, I mean, go right ahead and cut through both at the same time. Okay, so there you have it. The splice job, you definitely don't want these two to come in contact with each other. 
but I'm gonna go ahead or insulate these real quick to protect them inside the battery box. And I'm gonna drill a hole on this front face here and uh, stick the connector out and seal it all up. Okay, so you can see where the wires come through the hole. And that's a place of overtime that could have potentially chafed the wires and cause them to short out, which would create a fire right under your butt. So you definitely don't want that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this little dart and I'm gonna cut it off, put it over the wires. That way it acts like padding for the wires and protect it from this edge. And then I'm gonna put some sealer in here, probably hot glue. Okay, so as you can see, I've put a liberal amount of hot glue on the outside and on the inside just because I want to make a good seal around this so no moisture or water can get in to affect the brain. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the brains and reconnect it to the battery and reinstall this on the Superride S1000. Here are the three batteries I'm going to use. As you can see, each battery is 5200 milliamp. It's a 35C battery and it's a 22.2 lithium battery. So the way I have to connect these because the Super Ride is a 60 volt system. So I'm gonna have to put these in series, which means I'm gonna go positive to negative, positive to negative, and then I'll have one negative and one positive, and that will up the voltage. It'll go 22, 44, 66. Now, if I was to connect red to red to red and black to black to black, that's what you call parallel. And what that means is you're just gonna have a 22 volt battery that's gonna last three times as long. But since we're trying to increase the voltage, we're gonna go red to black, red to black. And then I'm gonna put a connector like this on the end of the pack, glue these together, tape them together, secure them, protect them. That way I can attach this to the bike and then just plug this into the pigtail on the super ride effectively maybe doubling our range and if that doesn't give us enough range i got three more batteries that i can build a second pack so let's get to it So if we did everything right now, whenever I connect the voltmeter up to these two wires here, we should get around 66 volts measured on here. And also be careful not to connect these two together on the end or bump them because you will get a lot of sparks. There you go, 69.8 volts. We got everything connected right, we just have to put a connector on it wrap all the wires up and tidy it up, and then plug it into the bike and see if it goes or blows. Okay, so here's the moment of truth. As you can see, the battery is reinstalled. Here's my little pigtail to connect to the battery. What I'm gonna do real quick is I'm gonna use my voltmeter and I'm gonna verify the polarity on the plugs just to make sure I'm not hooking negative to positive. So let's check this real quick, 67 volts. Let's check this one real quick. 69.9 volts so in theory we should be able to plug this in effectively doubling the range of this so one or two things are going to happen when i plug it in nothing's going to happen of course but when i power it up it's either going to work or it's going to fry so let's plug it up i'm very nervous okay it's plugged in nothing's heating up that's a good thing and now all we got to do is power it up let's see what happens okay this is kind of tricky to do one-handed so what I'm gonna do is just set the camera right here. That way, if there's any excitement, you'll be sure to see it. These are the little LEDs that come on when it powers up. Let's go ahead and hit the power button underneath. And it is on. But I'm getting a weird beeping. Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> Let's turn it off. Okay, so I'm out here in the front yard, and as you can see, I have the Super Ride out here. 
and I have this little bag that I bought at Walmart and I stuck the battery pack in here just for a test but previously when I turned it on you saw it go a little bit crazy it was off balance it wasn't acting right but what I've discovered is the lithium battery that I connected was right at 70 volts it's like 69 and a half volts this charges to 70 volts I mean uh this charges to 67 volts and that two volts was just enough to slightly overpower the system and make the computer go a little wonky. So what I was able to do is I just took a trip around the block, dropped the voltage of the main battery, then plugged in the auxiliary battery, and there's no issues at all. It's running just fine. So the next video is gonna be the range test.